Hi bakers! I'm Devin Taylor with Sweet Notes Bakery in Hagerstown, Maryland, and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite winter flavors, gingerbread. Now I know we've just gotten out of the cinnamon, pumpkin spice, everything, and I love that, don't get me wrong, but gingerbread is an even warmer, richer scent and taste that is just perfect as the weather gets even colder and towards the holiday season. So I know you're probably thinking gingerbread, gingerbread men, and that's one of my favorite things. But today we're gonna to do gingerbread a little bit differently. We're going to make a gingerbread bunt cake. So the first thing that you wanna do is grab your bunt pan. If you don't have one, you can find these pretty much anywhere. Walmart has them, sometimes even your grocery stores sell them in their baking aisle. Uh, they can look a couple different ways, but it's basically a fluted pan like this. We'll have little handles here, and then the inside will have a core that comes up the center. Um, you'll see with mine, I've already buttered and floured it, and that is to stop your batter from sticking. This is the best way to be able to get your Bundt cake out of the pan once it's finished cooking, because all of these little grooves and flutes are beautiful, but that's where batter can get stuck. So the best way to do it is butter and flour your pan. So go ahead and do that, and then you can just set that aside and we'll make the batter. So there are a few hallmarks of gingerbread that make it really good. It's dark molasses, a dark brown sugar, and of course all of those wonderful spices. So in my mixer, I already have a cup and a half of dark brown sugar. You do want dark as opposed to light because that is what makes gingerbread so rich, is getting those dark flavors together. And to that, you're going to add two sticks, which is one cup of melted butter. I just melted this in the microwave. You do want it to be melted and cool it for a few seconds beforehand. And now we're going to combine that with the sugar until it seems to make one smooth consistency. And that won't take very long. We're already there. So to our wet ingredients right now, we're going to add four eggs. And I like to add them in one at a time. Adding them in one at a time and mixing them a little bit allows them to become incorporated more evenly and you don't have to worry about getting lumps or over beating trying to work all four in at the same time. So I just let the mixer run on the lowest speed which is stir or if you're using a hand mixer just your number one. Alright, so we have a nice creamy mixture at this point and the color has gotten a little bit lighter but everything is nice and incorporated. By letting that butter sit for 30 seconds, you know, even a minute or two, it makes it better so that you don't scramble the eggs when you add them slowly. So by mixing them with the sugar ahead of time, you're getting air into it and you're cooling it even further while still keeping the melted quality of the butter. Then when you add your eggs, everything gets incorporated nice and you don't end up with a scrambled egg mess. <laughs> in your sugar. We want to avoid that. So here I have two and three fourths cup of just an all-purpose flour. You don't need a cake flour or anything like that. All-purpose is fine. I have a fourth of a teaspoon of um, nutmeg. I have a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon already in here. And then we will add one more spice as well. You need half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Don't skip on the salt. It is really important. A little bit of salt goes a long way in something that's sweet and really brings out all of those sweet flavors that you have. So the last ingredient is usually ginger and clove. Now, a lot of people don't have ginger and clove already at home. If you're only making gingerbread once or twice a year, it seems a shame to buy all the spices because spices can get expensive. So two years ago, I found something that has changed the game. It is McCormick's gingerbread spice. So they already have it together for you. I absolutely love that because I can just go to that and however many 
teaspoons or half a teaspoons I was going to put in of the other flavors, I combined them and just do them of this. I had a little bit of extra cinnamon and a little bit of extra nutmeg because that's something that I like. But other than that, you can use their spice mix that's already made for you. And that makes a huge difference. It smells so good. So I'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half of the gingerbread spice. So we're gonna mix these up, get those spices really incorporated in the flour. We have one more of our wet ingredients to add before we start combining the two, and that is molasses. If you've never tasted molasses before, you would think that it's very overly sweet, but it actually is kind of bitter um, at first, and then the sweetness comes in behind. It's a very thick, dark liquid, looks kind of like a corn syrup, but it's even thicker than that. Um, and it just adds such a richness to any cake. And I find that this keeps cakes incredibly moist. And that's why I, I don't know that I've ever had a bad gingerbread cake. So we need half a cup of this. I'm gonna show you a little trick. I know it can be pretty annoying to pour in honey and molasses and things like that into measuring cups, and then you're waiting six years for it to all come out. So here is my trick. Pam, spray your measuring cup. You can do this for peanut butter as well. Just a light spray. Now we're gonna pour our molasses in here. And look how thick and beautiful and shiny that is. I love it. And this is really the other big thing that makes gingerbread gingerbread. Now, we are going to add this into our wet ingredients. And because we have sprayed it with Pam, let's see how much, it just slides right out. So I will show you without even Without even scraping it, that's all that's already left in there. And you can see it pulling away from the sides. So it's gonna be really easy to get all of the molasses in the bowl. There you go. That took like 30 seconds. Pam, I'm telling you. Let's mix that in, and then we'll get ready to add our dry ingredients. So at this point, your mixture in your bowl is a nice dark brown again. The molasses is mixing in, and it should be nice and smooth. Your eggs and sugar should all be worked together. Perfect. Alrighty. So it's time to combine everything. Here I have buttermilk. Um, buttermilk you can find at the grocery store, either already mixed in your dairy case, if you don't think you're gonna be using a lot of buttermilk, which is me, I actually buy a buttermilk powder that you mix with water. Mix that with water, and then you can use it anytime, and it has a much longer shelf life in the refrigerator than actual real buttermilk that's already mixed for you does. So that is up to you, but that is what I'm using, and we are going to add that alternatingly with our flour and our spices until everything starts to come together. This is where we have to be a little patient, but we want to be careful not to overmix this. So you want to put your mixer or your hand mixer on the lowest setting and add things in, slowly incorporating them until you see they've just come together. If you overbeat it, you're going to ruin the texture of this cake. So we want to be really careful that we don't have the mixer running for too long. This is when it really will start to smell good too. All right, dry ingredients in and our last bit of buttermilk. And you'll see the mixture will start to change colors. Now we're getting into a much lighter caramel color. Drop your bowl down if you are using a stand mixer and scrape down the sides and underneath because your mixer doesn't actually touch the exact bottom of the bowl. And that's it, I think we're there. It's smooth, 
smooth and silky. It even has a kind of shine to it, which I really like. All right. So now into our pan. I love bundt cakes because they're so easy. You just bring the ingredients together and then dump it all into the pan. And that, I mean, that's really it. I'm gonna give it another stir, make sure we're all incorporated. Excellent. Now this may seem like a lot of batter to go in your pan. Just trust it. These don't rise as much as perhaps like a, a normal layered cake. Um, or cupcakes or something you make wood. So you can, I mean, put it all in, trust the recipe. Sometimes it's the hardest thing to do, but I just like to pour it around to help it even out. And it's this beautiful golden brown color. Oh, and you could do so many good things on top of this. You could do glazes, you could do a maple glaze. Um, they have maple extract, which you could use. You could do lemon if you wanted. Lemon would be delicious or just a regular vanilla. Or what I'm going to do um, is just dust it with powdered sugar. I find that this one really doesn't need a glaze. All right, so this is ready for the oven. It's going to go in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for 45 to 50 minutes. Do 45 minutes check it and you can always do five minutes longer if you need. Make sure you are checking uh, close to the center so that you are getting where it's concentrated most because of course the outsides will bake a bit first. The other trick to getting this out of the pan cleanly, we've already buttered and floured the pan, that's going to help you a ton. But the other thing is when it comes out of the oven, set it on a cooling rack face up like this and let it sit for 30 minutes. Just let it sit, don't touch it. Let it start to cool. And then you can run a butter knife down some of the flutes after 30 minutes, flip it over onto the cooling rack. It should come right out of the pan and let it cool completely before you do any kind of glaze. So it's gonna be at least another hour, hour and a half. Then you can do powdered sugar, you could do a glaze, you could do whatever you wanted on top of that. But let it sit 30 minutes in the pan when it comes out because if you try to get it out right away, there's a good chance that it breaks off in the center. So we wanna kind of let it set, cool down slowly, flip it out, and it can cool the rest of the way. And that is the trick to flipping out a perfect Bundt cake. I hope you make this at home and you enjoy the gingerbread bun cake as much as I do. This is perfect to serve to family and friends, but you could also slice it, wrap those in press and seal or cellophane and share them with your neighbors. It's the perfect holiday treat. You can take it to any party or gathering and it doesn't need to be refrigerated. So I hope that you enjoy this. Enjoy baking it because it's so much fun and it makes your house smell amazing. Until next time, I wish you all very happy baking.